Hello, all my fantastic viewers. Welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Uh, today is going to be an odd question, probably for people that have some transformer experience, expertise, engineering backgrounds, whoever it may be, whatever it may not be. But so um, today I just want to ask my audience, you guys, about transformers. I am not... Uh, I don't know the deep rooted principles of transformers. Magnetics was never an interest of mine, uh, you know, back in the uh, mid eighties when I started getting involved with electronics. I, I, I got into it just a little bit, but I quickly realized that magnetics was just not my cup of tea. Um, but I want to talk about saturation. I think that's where I'm headed with uh, the thought process of this particular situation. Um, so this is a standard Korean power supply um, designed by SNI, designed by them. Mm, I'm not sure if it's designed by them. This is by SNI, but this is the most common power supply you'll probably ever see. You eventually can do these with your eyes closed, but. There are some really odd, weird situations with switch mode power supplies, which that's what this is. Uh, this is a, a push-pull supply. And there's situations that are just not typical or common. Uh, we all know that in most cases, 99% of the time, probably not even that much, 98% of the time, when you have an output fault in an amplifier, 90% 8% of the time, you're going to have a failed power supply. There's just not much communication between the output section and the power supply when it comes to power supply currents. Uh, they just don't measure currents at this end of the amplifier. Uh, so the transformers are at the mercy of your connected supply. Uh, yeah, that's that is putting it. Uh, that just sums it up, really, <laughs> in a nutshell. Is this whole thing is at the mercy of your battery bank? If there's an issue, how quick you can pull the battery bank, or fuses, or breakers, or whatever you're doing to open up the circuit to these things. That's how I call dumb these are. Um, so if you notice here, I've got one transformer. Uh, sorry, this is take number two, guys. So I've already, I was cleaning this during take number one, but I got some incorrect information. This is not a 15 volt switched. This is for 12 volt. That's just a correction for the video that I just made. I kept calling this the 15 volt, which it's not. This is 12 volt. I think in some amps, I'm maybe 15 volt uh, but for this particular amp this is 12 volt this auxiliary winding so uh so in these power supplies there's six transformers four transformers are just your everyday transformer two transformers here one has an auxiliary winding for your plus minus uh 15 volts uh, for your preamp and of course other sections of the output section and this is responsible for your negative rail referenced square wave that usually has a 12 volt regulator <laughs> that um, supplies your uh, 12 volts referenced to negative rail to your gate drivers, which I think that's key to my question is this transformer is responsible for providing the available current to drive sorry that was my phone to drive the gate drivers kinda because i do believe the voltage regulator is still i think they're limited to current i think they have an overcurrent within the uh the lm 
voltage regulators, I would have to double check. So something in the switching of that is, I, in my opinion, leading to this core getting to a, a saturation condition. Um, in my experience, again, from years ago, um, <laughs> years ago, if I remember right, uh, the closer you get to the saturation level of the core, the more current the primary is going to pull for the same given output. Did I word that right? I'm not sure. Let me know down below. Um, and that's the thing is, is nothing else has failed. Just this transformer, obviously. <laughs> Um, the drivers, obviously, because the uh, all the gate resistors were burned up, so you already know right off the bat, gate drivers got taken out. But what took out this? Um, if there was a short in the secondary side, it would have affected all the others because these are all in parallel. So I don't believe it's a secondary short. I I believe it's a saturation problem of this core when the amplifier is driven in a state that it's borderline unhappy. I don't know. Uh, that's why I'm asking you guys. Is this a saturation kind of situation I'm dealing with? Um, or is this something else? Again, and you know, I, I've seen this happen on both sides. More often than not, I've seen it more on this side that supplies the referenced uh, 12 volts more often than this one. So this one I usually have shorted or failed uh, power supply transistors because the secondary was shorted to the auxiliary winding right here. But they've gotten much better at securing these windings. Um, I've had to rewind this as four turns here. I've had to rewind this a few times on, a, on several boards because um, it just shorts out from vibration. Uh, but this side here, I've seen this more often than not. Uh, I see, I'm starting to see this a lot more. Uh, so maybe I think it's just the design of the amplifier is they're just being pushed right to their level, right to their maximum level. So maybe SNI can one day maybe incorporate a auxiliary and independent auxiliary supply if that's the case where this core is getting saturated due to switching issues or abnormalities um because the auxiliary winding does have a i think it does have a snubber um over at the regulators is it a snubber i think it might just go through an inductor goes through an inductor goes through a capacitor uh, diodes for the regulator so it may not have a snubber on it so is it a high frequency switching noise it's causing an overlap I don't know so if you guys have any ideas please leave them down below um, knowledge is key to me personally um, I want to be able to take my knowledge and forward it off to everyone else um, as I age and get older and you know <laughs> be nice to move this on to other people who are interested in component level repair so uh, thanks guys if you have any ideas of what causes this again single transformer failure no shorts in the output section whatsoever there's no shorts whatsoever this, this amp will still power up just no output because there's no negative voltage reference so um yeah so guys if you can leave your comments down below for me that'd be great i'm just looking for some answers on this and as always please keep your fingers out of the rails these rectifiers right here have a ton of voltage on them which could give you a bad day thanks for watching guys we'll catch you in the next one